What's always attracted me to Buto are things that set it apart from other kinds of performance. Buto is not dance. Buto is not theater. Buto may be seen by some people as another dance technique like hip hop or gram that you can be learned and assimilated into a performance style. But that's never been what Buto is. Buto is not hijikata, an owner's way of moving. Buto is not wearing white makeup and moving slowly. Buto is not dance theater. Buto is not a dance technique. It's a way of looking at the world, a way that's as radical and as challenging to us today as it was 50 years ago. Maybe Buto is simply a word to use to describe a rediscovery of something that has existed for thousands of years. A rediscovery in the sense that certain truths must be rediscovered individually over and over again throughout human history. For me, Bhutto did not so much start a movement as complete a circle. When I began to study Bhutto, it seemed to me to be a form that I was already moving towards, already working in rudimentally. Many other Bhutto artists I know have also had the same experience. One of the reasons I call the work that I do Bhutto is because it's a word that gives context to my work and situates my work in a dialogue with other artists. These are the things I love about Buto, the things that make it unique. Kazuo Ono said, do not try to be good. The work is not about being professional or about seeking approval, but it's about being honest and being present. The world we see is an illusion and Buto is about the energy that plays beyond that illusion not simply surface shapes and surface movements. The, the best Buto pieces have a strange quality. They're not performances, they're not daily reality. And it's often only days later that you realize how good they were because of the way the images and energies linger and resonate inside you. This means, of course, that audiences often have to learn how to watch a Buto performance because the qualities they're used to looking for in a performance are not the qualities that Bhutto artists strive for. I love the eroticism in Bhutto. For his jikata, it was a way to overcome artifice, as was his idea of the putting the body in crisis. And then there's the concept of the empty body. How can you move from a place of non-intention yet stay totally present and engaged in your spirit? This, to me, is the heart of the challenge of Bhutto. It's a challenge of a way of being in the world. Hishikata said, is what we call memory really memory? What is memory if not the sum of all those things that have been eaten, erased, eliminated, in a word, all that has ceased to exist? And is not the world made so as to attend to that sum? I have no idea on what yardstick our memory was first based, but if we would only eliminate this memory, then an infinite world would come about where Bhutto could find its proper place. Unless we deal with such problems, we will only end up worrying about the straightened world and thus putting a lock on the door to the universe. Bhutto is radical in the way that Buddhism is radical because it cries out, I do not exist, I am an illusion, but I'm here anyway, and what am I going to do with this knowledge? Our work should be a ritual, it should be transformative inside of us. Every day, every rehearsal, every performance, if not, we're just pretending, we're just play acting. The surrealist Louis Aragon once said in praise of Robert Wilson's theater work that it was not surrealism, but what they had always imagined would come after surrealism, a total freedom of the human spirit. Buteau at its heart is an exploration of what it means to be incarnated in a body, an exploration of the relationship between body, spirit, consciousness, energy. And there are as many ways to explore those relationships as there are people who do it. And through that exploration, we find that total freedom of spirit that Aragon spoke about. Not, as Ono says, freedom to do what you want, or do what you will, but freedom from thought, freedom from will. Hijikata said, Bhutto plays with time. It also plays with perspective. If we humans learn to see things from the perspective of an animal, an insect, or even inanimate objects, the road trodden every day is alive. We should value everything. Rumi tells a story of a poor holy man who visited a king. The king greeted him saying, O oh, ascetic, 
The holy man interrupted him, saying, You are the ascetic. And the king said, Why do you call me an ascetic? Everything in this entire kingdom is mine. What do you have but the clothes on your back? The holy man replied, You are looking at it the wrong way. This world and the next, along with all your kingdom, belong to me. I have taken possession of the entire universe. It is you who content yourself with a morsel and a rag. That, to me, is the heart of Bhutan. If you enjoyed this video, please consider liking it and sharing it so that other people who might enjoy it can also find it. Also, if you'd like to see more videos like this, please consider subscribing to my channel. I plan to release videos every two weeks or so. Some will be essays on the intersection of art and spirituality, and there will also be videos of my own work, my music, and my short films. And finally, if you'd like to support me as a creator, please consider joining my Patreon page at patreon.com slash bobdinatale. I'll put a link to that in the description below. Anyway, I hope you enjoyed the video, and I'll see you next time.